uh, today there are very limited tools at our disposal for making uh, measurements of, of soil wetness and soil moisture. Of course, soil moisture determines uh, vegetation growth processes. It, 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 uh, it uh, drives evaporation from the surface, uh, cloud building processes over land, and we only have limited stations which are capable of measuring uh, this information today. Uh, what's unique about SMOS, uh, the water mission, is that it will give us a global picture of this uh, from one day to the next, and in doing so, provide a very uniform uh, data set with which to better understand uh, the water cycle. The technology challenge for, for the European Space Agency, of course, is to put an entirely new instrument in space. Uh, SMOS is a first in many ways, technologically speaking. We have an L-band radiometer. This is a very uh, different wavelength to uh, similar such instruments that have been flown in space before. Uh, this unique uh, frequency instrument gives us access to information about the way the surface emits microwaves and soil moisture influences uh, that emission. And so uh, by capturing a picture in this uh, frequency range, we can uh, generate a picture of uh, the soil moisture on the surface. Water cycle on Earth has two key uh, components. One, of course, is the way in which water is cycled on land, which has a, a daily influence on our lives. The thing that we don't see, of course, is the ocean salinity part. Uh, the way fresh water is mixed in the ocean and the signal that, that gives in terms of the salinity of the ocean is also a key indicator of uh, the water cycle. So we put the soil moisture information together with the ocean salinity and these are the two uh, key elements of the global water cycle.